Power. Shane Bowsky from Guitar Work, welcome back. It's great to be back after some summer holidays and hope you're doing well. This is exciting. Here's another request. Here is Steve Miller, uh, The Joker. A lot of fun. What's cool about it is if you haven't done single notes before, this is kind of a, sort of a bass line that the guitar is playing. Boom. Let's get that going. And if it's your first foray into single notes, it's going to be really, really good for you. It's some, some talk about technique and things like that. Very distinctive riff, characteristic riff kind of thing. And also some chords, some basic chords. Uh, three chords through the whole song. There's going to be an E, there's going to be an A, and there's going to be something called a B sus4. We'll get that going. And uh, I think if we take it at a nice a nice speed that you're going to be just fine on this. Uh, really only two parts to worry about. Again, that single note thing and also the strumming in the in the chorusy bit. Um, so I've got uh, the help of the fabulous Beat Buddy here for a metronome. It's a little more fun than playing to a metronome because you get the full drums going on. Uh, so later, maybe midway toward the end of the, also toward the end of the video, um, I'll play it at a slow tempo, play both ideas at a slow tempo and then bring it up to full speed. It comes in at 82 beats a minute. We'll slow it down to 60 toward the end and you can play along. We'll get our parts together, you can play along. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to watch these videos through, watch them through, get a sense of the pacing and where you might stop and rewind and all that, where you think you might have some trouble. Um, we don't expect you to swallow all this all in like a five minute video, so that, that would be tough for sure. But I do want to thank you for coming back and subscribing and all your, uh, your requests and thumbs up really helped me here on this end on YouTube, so I thank you for that as well. There's been great comments, that's for sure. And another request, I'll send this out to Claire in Colorado who's getting a new PRS electric guitar. Congratulations, Claire. I can't wait to see it. Way cool. Um, also, as always here at Guitar Work, go grab the sheets here. If you go to patreon.com slash guitar at work, there's a couple of sheets here. One's going to have the actual tab. One will have the chords and the lyrics so that you, you can memorize the lyrics and play along kind of thing with the recording. So it's going to be a whole lot easier if you've got these sheets. I'll be referring to them the whole time. That's patreon.com slash guitar at work. Um, first thing you'll notice also, I've got Capo 2 here. That's a big deal. Capo 2, you definitely want that. Uh, Capo 2, and it's going to start. It is with a pick, of course. Got a pick here. You zero, zero. I'm going to trust that you can read tablature. You're seeing zero, zero written there. Zero is referring to the low E string here because it's written on that bottom line. So I'm going to play two open E's just like this. There we go. Boom, boom. There you go. So you can open E like that. And to get right into the nitty gritty here, you want to stop those notes. Uh, they're, they're not legato. In other words, they don't linger. I'm going to do this. I'm going to stop it with my right hand pick. Check this out. So we'll get a close up of that. I'm going to go play it and stop it with the pick. Just like that, just by resting the pick, almost in anticipation of your very next stroke. So I'm gonna go down, stop, down, stop. And that sort of cuts it off, sort of a, more of a staccato effect. Otherwise, we're gonna hear this. Uh, which isn't quite, it's not as funky as it could be. So again, that would be stopping those notes, stop, stop. And you only do that on the long notes. I'll certainly point that out as we move along. So we've got zero, zero. And there's a 2-4 coming, and they're bracketed. So bracketed, at least on my charts, means they're quick. Okay, so we're going boom, boom, zero, zero, two, four. That's the second fret on the low E, and then the fourth fret on low E. Like that. So, so far, you have got zero, zero, and then two, four. And notice I'm using my first and third fingers on that. I think you'll find that pretty intuitive. You don't need to invoke the pinky into this. That's probably asking for trouble. So top again, zero, zero. Here's a 2-4. Next bar, I'm going to go open A, the open A string. And there I had that stop thing going again with the pick. You notice things are going 0, 0. And now here we have a hammer, 2-4 on the A string. A little uh, slur indicator over top with an H which means hammer. If you haven't hammered before, I'm going to play the second fret here on the A string and then hammer onto the fourth fret of the A string as well. So it's only one pick stroke. For two notes in there. Now your ring finger, your third finger is not your smartest or your strongest finger, but uh, if you haven't hammered, it's a really good exercise to wake up that ring finger who again is a little bit sleepy for everybody. I'm going to bring it right back to the top. Here's two bars here. We're going open E, 2-4, open A, and 2-4 hammered. Okay, and then we're going to this, the next bar, second fret of the A string. Good. Now make use of that stop and rewind. That's a lot already. So, but if you're looking at the paper, just stop it and try to read along. And top again. Here we go. Zero, zero. Two, four. 
open A, 2 4 hammered on the A string, 2 2 on the A string, and let's add this 2 4 bracketed so it's quick on the low E. And that brings us to our last bar. So I'm going to play those first three bars here. Here it comes open E, 2 4, open A, hammer 2 4, 2 2, 2 4. Brings us to our last bar. Let's do this. Four A notes in a row. Four open A's. Just like that. Now it's it's quick enough that you may feel you have to cross pick that. In other words, down up, down up with your right hand. It's okay to start with straight downs until you memorize it and start getting into the detail. Uh, you may find you do have to cross pick that because it is quick. Um, hey, and I should mention right off the bat, when you need detail with a pick, I'm a firm believer in resting that right hand right there. Rest them, uh, I'll call that the heel of your hand right there. And it's resting on the first couple of pins there for the low E and the A that are just kind of holding those strings in. That way the pick stroke is emanating from the wrist. I find if I'm resting on the bicep like that and I'm just out in space here, I just get no accuracy whatsoever and I get no dynamic either. This gives you a, a point of reference. Uh, I would discourage you from resting your pinky on there instead. I know a lot of great players do that. It's never worked for me. But anyway, try, try resting that guy there. I'll take it uh, from the, the last bar again is four A notes in a row. I'm going, I'm gonna put all down strokes for now. Here's the fourth fret, two of those on the low E. And the last two notes, we're going two, four on the low E. Here's that last bar again slowly. Open A four times. Here's four, low E two of those, and a two, and a four, and the whole thing repeats at that point. Uh, I'll play it slowly all the way through. Again, stop tape there and get that together. I don't think you need to watch it a million times, but if you've got the sheet, just get in there, try to memorize it. It's uh, it's hard, you're staring at a sheet, then you have to look at your left hand, you have to look at your right hand. I think if you memorize it a bar at a time or a few notes of, uh, at a time, you'll be just fine. Here it is very slowly from the top all the way through a couple of times. Three, four, it's going. Last bar. Okay, then we repeat without a pause, but I'll put a pause in just to keep us all together. Here it is again, top three, four, going. Comes in. Hammer. Remember, you're only putting those stops in with a pick on the long notes. The last bar, there are no stops in there. It's just too quick to do it. Uh, last time through, coming up slowly. Three, four, going. Stop. Stops. And hammer. Stop. Stop. Last bar. We're going to go right to the next one. Okay, here's the repeat. No pause. Boom. Boom. Here it comes. Stop. Stop. Here it comes. If you are resting here, you might be getting a little bit of palm mute, which can be a good thing. It can be. Uh, means that you're just up a little bit forward, so you're not getting an open string ring. That's kind of full volume, but if you're just barely touching there, get that funkier sound. There you go. So that's your, your verse section that happens all through the verse. Uh, I'll warn you, there's a second guitar who pokes his head out once in a while and uh, uh, you cannot do this at the same time as you're playing what we just played. There's a guy that comes in, he's, he's going to go like this once in a while, he goes, that's his job in there. He's going. You'll hear him again poke his head out once in a while. Uh, it's on your sheet there and it's not difficult, but you won't be able to do this and put that in as well. So if you have a buddy that's playing along, he or she can sit there and go every once in a while. There we go. Now, I'll bring you to the chorusy bit here. Uh, the chorusy bit is an E chord, which I trust you know. That guy there, there's an E, if you haven't seen him before. Like that. And I'll get to the strumming pattern in just a sec. It's gonna go to an A as well, the A. I like that fingering for A, two, three, and four. There's a couple other ways to do an A that are just as valid, but I find E to A with two, three, and four. My pinky's in there and it's not as crowded as if I was going one, two, three, but A, uh, choose your own A, doesn't matter. 
And the only other chord we're going to need is B sus4. And this guy's a bit of a stretch if he is new to you. He's an important chord. He shows up a lot in the key of E, songs in the key of E. Um, you already may know, let's say, a B7th chord, which is this guy here. Yeah, now that's a little bit country sounding uh, for this particular song. So he's using a B sus4. Let's get a fingering for that. First finger is on the A string here. There's a picture of him on your sheet. First finger is on the A string at the second fret. Third finger is on the fourth fret of the D string. And your pinky is on the fourth fret of the G string. Now, uh, the low E is X'd out. You don't want to hit him. Uh, you don't want to hit him at all, but you do want to include the high E open and the B open. And that's your B sus4 aspect there, the high E. Yeah, it's got that lovely spacious sound. You'll see that indicated in the diagram with a couple of open circles in there, meaning that they are uh, they are allowed to be in there. there you go. A lo lovely sound. B sus4, like that. Uh, a word about that stretch. If you're feeling like you just can't get that stretch, if your thumb is over like that, you're doomed. Okay, You just will not be able to stretch that for sure. Uh, you're doomed for sure, and you do not want your th uh, thumb leaning far, far to the left. That will negate your stretch indeed. Uh, your pinky just won't operate as he should. So my thumb is right in behind where my middle finger would be if he was on the neck like that. I'm coming in from underneath, even with the length of my fingers, I need to have some, some fairly proper technique to get that guy. Yeah, coming in from underneath like that. Keep the thumb low and right in the middle. You should be able to get them. Uh, you may recognize that as a power chord shape. A power chord shape it is indeed with the added sort of colors that we've got the high E and B in there. Yeah. Now as for strumming patterns, if you've got that chord, if you haven't got that chord going on, you probably want to stop tape there and just practice going from E to A to B sus4. Back to A. I'll put them in order here in a second, but you do want to be able to play those chords. If there's any hesitation in your left hand when you're strumming, your right hand will just stop. He doesn't know what to do. So let's assume you stop tape and you're okay with those chords. It's a straight 16th note strum, okay? There's 16th, I, I always go walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken. Two chickens per chord. And what the heck does that mean? It's going to go walk the chicken, walk the chicken like that. That's one bar as you see written out there. Then it's going to move to the A. Walk the chicken, walk the chicken. Back to E. I'll take the pauses out of course in a sec, but E, walk the chicken, walk the chicken. A, walk the chicken, walk. E coming. Walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk. That's, that's our strumming pattern. We'll get to the area of, of, of accenting here in just a sec. Uh, so I'm going to take it through in the order that you see it, the order of occurrence, and assume that you're going to be okay on that B sus. So here it is, the chorus E bit with strumming. Three, four, E, A, E, A, E coming, A, B sus, A, next line, E, A, Coming. A, B, sus. We're gonna hang on to that guy. He's a double. One, two, one, two, and we are back to Bo. We're back to that part in there. Um, in just a minute or so, we'll put the beat buddy on and play along together. Hey, about accenting when you're strumming, you want to accents on uh, accents on beat two and four, beats two and four, and that's where your snare, uh, snare drum would typically come in. So I'm going to go walk the chicken every second. Walk the word walk. So I go walk the chicken, walk the chicken. Like that. I'll sit on E for a little while and get that going. Try to play along at home. It really drives it forward. It's not so static when you're not accenting. So and it'll happen in a lot of the music you're playing. So get a handle on that. It doesn't come naturally right away. You may find. So I'm going to go walk the chicken, walk the chicken. Soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud. See how that drives it along instead of just this. That yeah. listener has a hard time tapping their foot to that, but if you do this, don't. drives so I encourage you to work on that but don't feel bad if it doesn't come right away um, uh, we did okay we went all the way through um, the verse and the chorus I'll bring I'll put the beat buddy here on and I'm it's at 82 beats a minute as I told you the song comes in at full concert speed I'm gonna go down to 60 so we can play along together bring it down to 60 beats a minute here and uh, I'll play first of all I'll back you up to this thing 
at 60 beats a minute. And I'm just going to go round and round and round and try to keep up and uh, rewind, start again if you can. Uh, maybe the first couple of times I will put a pause uh, before it repeats just to give you a fighting chance. Okay, so here it comes. One, two, three, four, and... <laughs> One time through. Three, four, and. There we go. This time I'll go through without stopping for the repeat. Okay, so fasten your seatbelt. Three, four, it's going. Again, top. Top, last time. There we go. Hey, if you have a friend that can play along, if you're playing with your two guitar players, um, he or she uh, could play while you're doing this, that part there, they could go E. Boom, A, ba ba boom, boom, B, sauce, ba da dum da, A, ba ba da 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 da, and that's the whole thing. So you're going E, ba ba dum da, B, sauce, ba da dum da, A, ba da 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 da. Or they could do the sixteenth note strumming. Boom, boom, ba da dum da, ba da dum da, ba da 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 da. Or hey, if you're doing the campfire version all by yourself, you may want to do a little bit of this. And maybe during the vocal, you want to come in. So those chords again are E, A, B, sus, and A. And that is written on your actual song sheet that has the lyrics and such in there. Uh, very cool. So let's get to the play along portion here. Get to the play along portion. And I'm going to do it at 60 first. I'm going to do uh, the main riff four times. And then I'm going to launch into the chorus and do that one time, and then that's at 60 beats a minute. Then I'll bring it up to the proper 82 beats a minute, and uh, hopefully you can, you're, you're working your way up to that concert speed. Okay, so here it is at 60 beats a minute with the fabulous Beat Buddy here. I'll play the main riff four times, and then chorus one time and stop it. Here she comes, play along. One, two, three, four, and out. again. Last time. Chorus. A. E. A. B. A. B. B. Sus. A. Next line coming E. A. E. A. Da 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 da. E. A. Da 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 da. Long B sus. Stay there. Two. Three. Four. And you're back to. Into that. So that was a 60. As I said, that was a 60. Let's bring that up to 82 here. 82. This is full concert speed. Uh, again, stop tape, go back, play that, that 60 beats a bit uh, until you're feeling really, really good about that. Uh, sometimes bad things happen to good people when we try to too, play too fast, too quickly, right? So get it down slowly and it will come. 82 beats a minute, same thing. We're going to go four times main riff and then a chorus a bit. Okay, here it comes. Two, three, four, and. <laughs> Stay on 
in there so fabulous uh hey and then you've got you know, the first solo when the first guitar solo is happening that's going to be over the chorus form uh uh yeah so just keep on uh, keep going on the on the chorus and then um yeah there's only the two parts so if you're playing rhythm it's the two parts um, my guess is if you're doing around the campfire you're just going to do the vocal parts in there anyway so all good uh arrangement is easy play along to the recording that's just like playing to a metronome and i highly recommend that beat buddy i'm not affiliated with them in any way shape or form but i really love it it's great it's so handy um, i want to thank you so that's it for the joker steve miller great request thanks for that and thank you again for subscribing and all that happy stuff thumbs up really helped me on this end guys so i appreciate that and keep those comments coming it's really uh, it's uh it's great to read them, and a lot of great requests are coming from there. I appreciate it. Uh, if you hit the bell notification thing, it'll tell you when new videos have come out. Back from summer holidays, raring to go, lots of videos coming. So let me know how you're doing with all this, and I look forward to seeing you again. Okie dokie. One, two, three. Now, all right.